Hey guys, it's Nadia from the Idea Designs and today we're going to try something a little different. Um, I again have a coaster here that I want to cover and um, I wanted to try watercolors and um, just it's something that's been on my mind and I want to try. So what we're going to do is we're going to try painting some of this coarse molding paste right onto the coaster to kind of give us a base for our watercolor. Um, because I don't believe we'll be able to paint onto the resin directly, or at least we won't get the effect that we want. And I want to have that kind of a linen type of look, like linen paper type of look, where a lot of times when you paint on watercolors, the paint paper is a bit more textured, or at least has um, some kind of a coarseness or just uh, a light texture to it. So this way it... Uh, you know, it just it holds on to the the colors from the watercolor a little bit better and absorbs it. I don't believe that this molding paste will absorb the water from the watercolor, but at least it will mimic that look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to cover this center area. And so the, the mold that I'm using here is a little bit larger than a coaster mold. It is about five inches. So it's actually the perfect size for a ring tray, like a ring dish or a ring tray. So I'm going to be making that out of this if it all works out. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish putting these, putting this molding paste on. Um, and then once we're done, we'll let that dry and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so it's been a few hours and it's dried, but what I ended up doing after I looked at the molding paste that I had put on, I found out that um, it was a little bit too coarse for what I needed. So um, I ended up covering it with the light molding paste, which is, you know, you know, just less coarse basically and a little bit more white. Um, and I layered that on top. So it, it has a nicer texture on top now and I've let that dry as well. So I'm going to be using some watercolor paints. Now these are my daughter's because I don't actually have my own set. And I had bought this for her. She's used it a little bit, but um, I decided I'm going to try it out as well. So, and this is a test coaster that I made. So this is an old coaster that I had laying around and I just kind of did the same thing, put the paste and then painted on it and uh, tried to see if the design that I'm looking at would work. So I've just poured some water into this tray and I'm just adding a bit of color because for, for the first layer or the bottom layer of this watercolor flower that we're creating, um, we just want to kind of create a light outline or the basic shape of the flower. And I'm gonna apologize right now to any professional watercolor artists out there. Um, this is definitely a new medium for me. I Played with it a little bit when I was a teenager, but it really hasn't been something that I spent a lot of time in. So if my technique is all wrong and I'm just doing this completely backwards, I apologize. It's uh, I'm just you know trying you know trying it out and having some fun with it here. So if this is cringeworthy for you, I'm really sorry. Um, you know you can fast forward <laughs> to the to the next part. So in any case, um, what I wanted to do here is just kind of add a base, get the overall shape. And then um, once I have that figured out, I'm going to dry that layer. So I think I'm going to add a few leaves in here as well. And then I will um, um, actually take this to my heat gun. Uh, a hair dryer probably would work as well if you have a hair dryer. Uh, and I'm just going to dry this because again, like I said, it could air dry. 
um, but the molding paste is not going to absorb the water. So it's going to have to just evaporate the water from air drying. So if we're just letting it evaporate, we can easily do that with our heat gun or our hair dryer as well, just to kind of speed up the process so we're not having to wait an hour in between each layer. So we will uh, get these leaves painted in and then I will uh, head over to my heat gun. I'm not gonna be able to show it on camera just because I didn't want to set up my camera for 30 seconds on the other side of my studio. So, um, sorry guys, but just know that um, that is what I'm gonna be doing. Oh, and actually before we head over there, I am gonna add some of these gold highlights around the edges. And the one thing that's really nice about watercolor is how the colors blend. And uh, you don't really have to do much because with the water, it just tends to kind of does its own thing where it moves and it pools where it likes and it gives a really organic kind of look to um, to the piece that you're creating. So I'm doing that here with the gold. And um, I also wanted to mention that it is very likely that um, this same effect or something similar, maybe not the same, but something similar could be done with watered down acrylics. So if that's something that you wanted to try, then for sure, um, you could try to get something similar in terms of this effect with acrylics as well. Um, the colors just might be a little bit bolder or more opaque, but I mean, that could also work as well. So, all right, so we're just about finished here. And then again, I'm going to head over to my heat gun and I'm just going to dry it. And it's literally going to be for about 30 seconds just to kind of get the surface. We don't want to heat up the molding paste too much. So keep the heat gun at a distance. All right, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and it is dry as you can see. And now we're gonna add our second layer. So for the second layer, I'm gonna add a bit more of the pigment to my water. So it's a little bit uh, more opaque. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in my details. And I probably will end up doing about three layers on here just because each layer kind of builds it up a little bit in the areas that you want it to be a little bit darker. And again, this is not something that I am proficient at or am an expert at. So these flowers may not turn out perfect, but again, it's just more of showing the style. And I'm sure some of you out there are probably a lot better at this than I am. So um, just wanted to kind of show you that it's possible to kind of get this kind of look um, on with your resin pieces, or at least that's the attempt, right? That's what I'm trying to do is to show that we can mix um, this type of media with resin as well. And again, the main thing is, is to make sure that everything is completely dry because if we're, when we're sealing things under resin, if there's any moisture, uh, you know, under the resin or captured inside the resin, that is going to cause problems um, over time and during the cures and it causes bubbles and then just overall, just things just change. And uh, we wanna make sure everything is perfectly dry. And that way we end up having a perfect seal on top and we don't have to worry about things being affected or changing over time. So, and I, these are my samples that I will be holding on to. So I will hold on to them and look at them, you know, in a few months and see if anything does change. Um, I do that with most of my samples. So this way I can, whenever I try a new technique, so this way I can see if over time it did impact the resin in some kind of negative way. But I found that this, um, I don't anticipate that there's gonna be any issue here. So again, we're almost finished the second layer. Again, gonna go in with a little bit more gold, add in those highlights. And once we're done with this gold, I will go and dry that, dry this piece again with the heat gun and I'll be back to add in even more details. Okay, so we're back again, and now I just want to add in some fine details with a, this Sharpie fine tip marker. So I just want to go in and just kind of detail out the edging of this flower, and I'm going to keep it kind of loose. I'm not going to, um, you know, be too, you know, accurate or perfect with these lines just because I like that kind of a loose organic look that watercolor gives and then these outlines are really just to kind of give the flower a little bit more structure so we kind of know it's a flower and not just a really pretty pink blob so 
Um, we're going to go in and add in these details. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect, but we just wanted to, to kind of give that structure. So we'll go in, add the details of the flowers. And I'm also going to add in a little of these little fine lines in here just to do a little bit of shading. And I really like how this ends up giving the flower a little bit more of a vintage look. It's almost like old fabrics or, you know, even postcards and things like that, or sorry, um, greeting cards um, where you kind of, you know, got that old vibe to it. So it's going to go in, add in those details. And then once we're done with this, I'm going to come in once more and kind of highlight some areas with the watercolor again, and then maybe even add a little bit of glitter. So we will get to that right after this. So I'll see you on the other side. All right, so again, we're going to go in and just highlight the edges of the petals here. And I, oh, I'm not really watering down this part of the paint now. So just a little bit of water just to kind of um, hydrate the pigments a bit, but we're going to put them almost as a straight color on here just because we really want those to pop compared to the rest of the flowers. So I'm going to go in. And I'm also going to add in a bit of this coral color just to kind of, again, add a little bit more depth to the flower. So we'll do that. And it's really looking nice now. And I also am going to want to add in a little bit more of a background. It does look nice with the white, but I want to see what it looks like with a blue background. <clears throat> and the one thing that's really nice about this particular set um, of watercolor, which I found on Amazon, is that it uh, it has all the colors are really pearlescent, so everything has a nice shimmer to it. And again, just going in, adding in a little bit more blue, and uh, yeah, so getting that all sorted out. Yeah, I bought this set on Amazon um, back at Christmas time for my younger daughter, as uh, she's <laughs> she's a budding artist as well, and I wanted her to try this medium as something different for some of her drawings. And again, it looks like, as you can tell, some of the little color pots are missing. So it seems like she did enjoy it to some degree. But um, so, but I did ask her if I could borrow it and I might have to go ahead and buy myself a set since uh, I really like this look. I think I might try it again sometime. All right, so we're all set, everything is dry, and we want to add an outline now. And I'm gonna be using my acrylic Serenade Relief outliner. And as you can see on the sample, I tried a couple styles, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on here as well. All right, so I'm just gonna outline this circle that I created with molding paste. And the molding paste was a little bit rough on the edges, so I'm hoping that this is going to kind of cover that a bit or at least smooth it out and it'll just kind of give us a nice finish along the edge here. So again, um, if you guys are not familiar with this product um, or if you're looking for alternatives, I will link a one of my other videos which shows, um, explains more about this product as well. It shows some options. So I will link that above here and also at the end of the video. And then what I'm going to do is just add some dots. And again, this is a really simple technique, even for someone who's a beginner, just three little dots and just kind of space them evenly as you go around the edge. And we'll do that for the entire circle. And once we're done, we'll leave that to dry. And once that is dry, we'll see if there's any more details we want to add before we go ahead and add our top coat.
right, so this is another one that I'm working on as well. It's another uh, pour that didn't go amazingly well. So um, I'm just going to fill in this design. And again, I hand painted these little flower um, designs around the border here. And I'm just filling them in with some glitter. And again, I mix that as you guys, if, if you've been following me for a while and watching my videos, you know that I use this gloss varnish from DuraClear and I just mix it with a bit of glitter. And we're just going to add that bit of sparkle to these flowers on the border. And uh, again, well, once we get that all set up, then we will let that dry before we can um, pour the top coat on top of it. But the, for the pattern on the inside, again, it was just another style for watercolor that I wanted to try. So, and this one I'm not going to be outlining in terms of the black uh, Sharpie. I am just going to leave that as is because it just, again, it kind of gives a different look. It could be a little bit tighter again. This is just, it's something that I haven't really played with in a long time. So we're going back high school days is a long time ago. So um, it's been a while since I played with watercolor, but I really do like how these have all are all turning out. So again, we'll finish this up. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter to the inside where the watercolor is as well, just because, um, you know, you can always add a little bit more sparkle. So everything is dry and we're ready to add our top coat. And uh, so we have our resin mixed up here and I'm just going to be doing a thin layer on top right now, just to kind of cover everything up, seal it all in and make sure that everything is, you know, looking good. Pour it on top. A little bit more there to cover that one up. All right, and then we'll use our heat gun to get all the bubbles out and we'll let that set. We'll need, again, for my resin, I use a one-to-one -one that's a medium uh, viscosity and it needs about six to eight hours to, to um, soft cure, which is basically, you know, it's cured enough to touch. And then I'm going to go in and add a, another layer on top just to give us that nice finish that we're looking for. So actually this part of the video is actually out of order. I ended up adding some aquamarine stones, but it was after that first layer of resin that you guys saw, the clear. And then I went in and added another layer to kind of seal these guys in as well. So sorry about that. But yes, yeah, so after this, we'll unmold them. So here we go. So here's my sample with the top coat on it. And as well, I took this one out of the mold and added another uh, kind of a top coat or a dome flood coat on it as well. And this one is still in the mold with all the stones that we added. And we'll try to get this one out of the mold. It's a little bit tricky there. So let's get that out. And there we go those bits and pieces off and I really like how this looks so it just gives some little bit of dimension to the edging with the stones and like I said it's going to be a ring dish so it works out really well now I want to show you guys this other tool uh, you know that I've sometimes I use my exacto blade but I got this tool here and it's a de deburring tool I believe and um, I think that's the name I'll have to look it up <laughs> but um, so this one kind of works similarly to you know an exacto blade but a little bit you know safer in some aspects to you so um, and you can just kind of go in and this is for if you have an edge that doesn't need a ton of sanding it just kind of you want to get a little bit of that edge off you can use this tool now um, I don't know if I, you know, I actually really like sanding my edges, so I may still continue to do that. But this is actually really good for um, some of those kind of irregular uh, edges, which I'm going to show you in a bit. But um, for this particular round one, I wasn't, uh, you know, thoroughly happy with, um, you know, how the edges turned out. Just because, again, this is kind of, you know, distribution of pressure so um, sometimes when I'm going around there was like little edges that helped made the tool dig in a little bit more than others and the edge wasn't completely kind of uniform and smooth but just to show you for an example um, that's what it looks like 
for a circle, so as you can see there, it's not quite even. So for a circle, I think I would still use my sanding tool, but um, for so, we go. so for this one here, this actually this tool works perfectly for an edging like this, where there's a lot of irregular edges and it might be a little more difficult for your sander to kind of your sanding tip to get in here. So this edge actually this tool actually works perfectly for these type of edges as well. So um, that would be my recommendation if you decide you want to use a tool like this is um, more for irregular edges or like agate molds and things like that. Not necessarily for uh, edges like a circle, which is um, needs to be kind of a little bit more perfect and smooth. So there we go. So I just want to show you that tool. And now we I'm going to go ahead and paint the edges and then we'll be done. And there we go, it's done. And look how pretty it looks. So I actually really, really like how this turned out. And a little bit of that shimmer from the watercolor in there. And I did add a little bit of glitter. I don't know if I showed that on camera, but, um, and then I painted the edges in my gold that I usually use. And I'm gonna link that above for you guys to see where, um, you know, how, what the paint I use and what my process is for painting my edges. And this is the sample. I actually really like how this one turned out. It's, um, it was a lot more rough and loose and cause it was a sample I did quickly, but I really like how the watercolor looked in this piece here. So really happy with that. And then my last one as well, also very happy with this style. So it's kind of like three different styles within the watercolor. Um, and I, I really like them. Um, we could potentially use watercolor paper in here. That's something that could be tested. It probably needs to be sealed before we um, add our resin, but definitely something that could be tested as well. So just look at the sparkle on this. It's so pretty. So anyways, I hope you guys like this tutorial. And again, just trying to show you a little something different so we can stretch what our resin capabilities are. And I hope you guys like that. And if you do decide to try it out, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and let me know, um, or even on Facebook. So let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I hope you guys liked it and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much guys. Take care. Bye.